Live shot out of Miami, you can see thousands of protesters there on an exit ramp for I-95, the protest march trying to get onto the interstate, and you can see a bunch of police blocking them off and the road just about abandoned as well. The protests, one of two major stories that are converging as the protests we've been seeing in Miami and across the country are fueling fears that they could spur another spike in COVID cases. I do worry. I worry terribly about the peaceful protests. I see some wearing masks. I see some others not wearing masks. And so we are really trying to work with each of the mayors to expand testing availability over the next week or two. We have now reached 111,000 COVID deaths here in the United States, according to Johns Hopkins. My next guest, along with the help of the Economic Hardship Reporting Project, has found a moving way to remember just a few of the victims. He's a cartoonist who's drawn and profiled some of those who lost their lives, like Israel Tolentino, a 33-year-old firefighter from Passaic, New Jersey, and Liliani Jordan. She's a 27-year-old supermarket clerk. She kept working while many of her co-workers stay home. And then there's Wando Evans, a 55-year-old Walmart maintenance worker. He worked until two days before his death. A short time ago, I spoke with the artist Steve Brodner. Steve, I want to ask you about some of these powerful illustrations of COVID victims that we saw in the Washington Post. But before we do that, I'm curious, what prompted you to draw them? What drew you to, to, to do this as a project? And how did you hook up with the Economic Hardship Reporting Project, which helped lead you to the Post? Um, well, it just kind of naturally flowed from the, uh, the depths of pain and uh, and, and great uh, uh, grief that uh, I, along with everybody else, uh, have been going through over these last few months. And it is the illustrator's particular mission to draw bright lines under real things that are happening. And it just, uh, it just grew organically out of that. If I could draw the faces of the people who have been lost, I felt, um, we could have an extra second to consider them, not as numbers, but as actual human beings. Write a little bit about their story, who they were, where they lived, who they left behind. Um, perhaps that helps us feel the profundity of the moment a little better. They really do have an impact just from seeing the the faces that you've drawn and the three or so lines of information about each one. I just want to go through some of them and, and ask you what, what caught your eye or what your inspiration was as you told their story. For example, Nancy Jo McKeon, who was 80 and was a daughter of the American Revolution in Louisville. She was a former GE worker. Or William Miranda, who was 96 and was injured during D-Day won two bronze stars also out of Kentucky. Anything, was there something specific about them that came to mind or what can you tell us about, about them in your memory and in your hand? The, the truth of this is that I started doing this on my social media feeds on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And I'm still doing one a day. So you can just every day check in with me and see what I'm doing now. Um, but the... Uh, the first ones were of celebrities. Bucky Pizzarelli passed away, and uh, a whole lot of jazz musicians and artists and uh, people who were pretty well known. Later on, uh, I got the idea that uh, maybe we should go to the lesser known folks, people who would be easily lost and um, not seen people who work in meatpacking plants, people who work in hospitals, uh, particularly vulnerable populations. You know, it's been hitting African-Americans especially hard. I, I think I've done more African-Americans than others. I think it's a good thing to say or to show that it is whipping across the population and it's affecting everyone. Were you trying to send a message or messages with your selection of certain people? And I'll note a couple of other examples. Uh, Benjamin Hirschman, you drew, who was 24, an intern for a Michigan state senator who was denied a coronavirus test, and his doctor recommended cough syrup, and he later passed away. Or Priscilla Caro, who was a 
coordinating manager at Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, one of the heaviest hit hospitals, who was self-quarantined after patient exposure. She was set to retire this year. W were there messages in the decision to tell, to, to draw their images or, or images of, of people like them? It, it was important to me to be as diverse as possible, uh, to give as wide a range of people who are being affected as possible so that uh, we do see the reality of it, which, you, you, which is that you really can't hide. You can only be safe. You can only take good care of yourself and your family. So, you know, uh, if I look up one day and I say, you know, I haven't done a, a child yet, I'll do a child. Um, it's, it's, it's important to do um, the larger demographics, but the smaller demographics count as well. I want as all, I think, good journalists want to do, uh, uh, to go to the silence, to go to where it's being most quiet, but actually where the need is, it, and the pain is dire. Obviously, there's a benefit for you, something cathartic in this, and something that celebrates the people who have been lost when you draw them. Uh, is there a message that you're hoping for for the general public? Are you hoping that they'll spur into action, or, or that they'll grieve, or or is it just up to everybody how they respond? Of course, we don't live with grief 24-7. Well, that, that'll, that'll make us all mentally ill. Um, but as in all grief, when we've lost a father or a mother or a grandparent or, God forbid, a younger person in our lives, grief is about really dealing with it, really going through grief, all those stages. And then you can watch a movie, you have dinner, have a glass of wine, but when that's over, that process comes back. And I think we're all going through this, and for me, this is one way to put it on the table and, and to discuss it. Steve Brodner is an award-winning illustrator and caricaturist. His work on these COVID victims has just been featured in the Washington Post and is on his website. Steve, thank you so much for your work. Thank you for a little bit of time. You're welcome. And we'll be right back.